Okay. <laughs> Hello, welcome to YCFT. This probably sounds dreadful. <laughs> Today, there's no special prizes for guessing what we are talking about. Yeah, uh, guess what, guys? <laughs> we're talking about Scream. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, we are. In particular, we're going to talk about Scream's legacy. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess the reason we decided on the legacy is because... The last, last minute uh, set dressing. Yeah. Set dressing right there. This is uh, one of the most iconic horror films, arguably, that's ever been made. Yeah. We don't need to analyse this film no. as such. That's been done to death. It's already. been done to death. But its legacy is very interesting. It really is. And so, brief overview of the film. Yeah, sure. So, um, released in 1996, um, considered to be Wes Craven's masterpiece. It's a very self referential horror movie that's based around a group of teenagers in a small town called Woodsboro focused around um, the final girl, Sydney Prescott. It, it you know, follows the conventions of the slas classic slasher. Friends yeah. are picked off one by one. Yeah, whilst at the same time what makes it unique and what I think has shaped horror going forward is it picks apart the genre. These... It's so referential to yes. other slashers that have happened. The simple line of, oh, we're like, she's going upstairs and she should be going for the door, but then yeah. end up having to do that. So no slasher film was the same after this. It couldn't. It kind of like how James Bond had to change after Austin Powers because everything was picked apart in a genre. Horror had to change because yeah. the holes had all been laid out in front of us. The rule... We didn't realise there was a rule. Probably subconsciously, we knew there were rules to surviving a but horror But they've never movie. been spoken. But they never been spoken. And now, horror today, they go out of their way to break those rules. Yeah. I mean, the characters in Scream, these are characters that openly talk about the cliches of horror. Yeah. They're not, I mean, it's not referential to the point where these characters are aware they're in a horror movie, but they act like they're in a horror movie and they yeah. compare what's happening to them to a horror movie. Yeah. Obviously, the biggest, the twist, I think, is what? The twist is sensational. It's sensational. Heavy, the heaviest of spoilers, there's two killers. There are two killers. We have met them both. We did. We met, we met Ski Ulrich oh. and Matthew Lillard. Their great. motivations, I think, were really cool. The fact that, like, they. It's like, do we have to have them? One does, one does it. They're just, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah. They're Stu and Billy. Is he Billy? Loomis. Based Loomis off Halloween. Loomis the name most horror fans are familiar with to some extent, I yeah. think. So nods. Yeah. There's nods to horror throughout this. And yeah. Yeah. So that cements Scream as an icon. It is. I mean, I think it's also, again, there's a, it, there's a genuinely compelling whodunit in Scream as well. Yeah. You know, th there are a group of murders that happen and we need to try and figure out who the killer is. Yeah. And purpose pulls us in several different directions. And yeah. What I really like is this costume, it existed before the film. Yeah, you know, that's purpose true. He picked a costume that already exists. Yeah. Obviously, it's based off a painting. Yeah. So it's like the killer could be anyone. Kind of go harkening back to Halloween, which was based off a... Michael Myers' mask was based off a real yeah. mask. It could be anyone. Could this be. is a costume that everyone can get their hands on. Yeah. Which is played into in later things. So the legacy of it's this film. Un... What has this film gone on to inspire, would you say? I th oh, Your God. Magical I mean, notepad. And the magical notepad. I mean, to name but a few. You could argue Shaun of the Dead. It's it's Origins Lay and Scream. A movie that's, you know, kind of calls out the cliches openly. The characters discuss you know what their ideas of zombies are yeah um cabin in the woods yeah probably the most meta horror film that's ever made ever been. drag you can me to yeah. hell yeah you know um behind the mask of leslie vernon which is a movie that we oh, adore which is Rise uh, leslie. Oh, yeah. admittedly it's probably more well is it more parody to horror, an extent horror comedy it kind of like it's kind of meta in the way that cabin yeah. in the woods is i would say you know final girls the movie yeah obviously the scary movie franchise Oh, yeah. Which is outright parody, but yes. they are still great films. Fear Street. Most and recently. Particularly the first Fear Street. Which most is recently Fear Street. Like, that, the first opening scene, killing off the most famous actress in the yeah. film, 
Yeah, I mean, it, in a, a guy in a black costume with a white type mask, it's Scream. It's a different setting, but it's almost like a carbon copy of the yeah. Drew Barrymore kill. Yeah, the, I feel like the film, all the Scream sequels have been cursed by the legacy. They None of them have ever been able to live up to well, I think the first film. The first film, I don't think has been bettered. I truly think it's a masterpiece of horror. It's, yeah. it's in my top five horror films of all time. Yeah. I think it's fantastic it's like but there does come a point sorry i think where the screen films almost end up parodying themselves yeah as opposed to the genre it's, around them what i do like when they go into the sequel is because the first one's all about tropes of the genre it's like right what are tropes of sequels yeah which is pretty cool unfortunately there right. is a week like the killers are weaker and i do like scream too but the killers are weak yeah they are in this film the motivations are they a bit are. weak yeah i agree with that but again, it has it still feels like Scream because like, we have the rules of sequels explained to us, and it kind of goes up. The body count's always bigger. Yeah, more kills, gorier. Yeah. And it, I think it is a good follow up. It just oh, you can't replicate that reveal, the reveal no. of the two killers. You can't no. do it. It's ne the killers have never the motives behind the killers in the sequels have never been quite as disturbing as they were in the first film. Yeah. I mean, the, the first film is equal amounts terror and genuine suspense as much as it is comedy. Yeah. There's a really great balance that Wes Craven creates with, with the two. Yeah. And as the films go on, Scream 2 is still great at kind of having that balancing act. Scream 3 kind of, it, it's just more outright comedy yeah. than anything Scream else. Scream 3, I think, has the weakest kill. But I know... I, so. Well, I was just going to say, when I think of Scream... I think of the kitchen scene in particular, the reveal yeah. of the two killers. That is horrifying. Yeah. It will never cease to be horrifying to watch. And when you look at the reveal of the killers in the late sequels, it's never as strong. It's never as impactful. No. It's never as emotional. And it's I know never quite as gripping. You have a soft spot for Scream 3. I, I do have I, a soft spot. I, there's no Scream film that I outwardly just don't like. I can watch all yeah. of that. For me, Scream 3, I think it's the weakest killer. I agree with it, that, actually. To me, yeah breaks a rule and it messes with the timeline of the first film which i just yeah i don't uh, like yeah it it almost weakens i get i do like we know what the original plot was supposed to be what wes craven wanted to do mm -hmm. wanted to bring back uh matthew lillard yeah they want i would have loved that matthew lillard himself is convinced that Stu didn't die well he's in all of them <laughs> He like has Matthew Lillard has a cameo in the background yeah. of all the other sequels. The character Stu is not in all of them, but Matthew Lillard cameos yeah. in the film. Which is why I think, because so. we have Scream 5, or Scream, because yeah. it's now, you know, the new thing is to do a sequel, just exactly the same name as the first one, yeah. so people don't get scared by thinking they have to watch loads of films before it. Yeah. I, genu I genuinely think uh, he's going to be the killer, that Matthew Lillard will be the killer. You're calling it now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, I think he's going to be the killer. I don't want to commit to that. Because just... I know this is the first one that's not had Wes Craven involved. Yes. That was a plot line that Wes Craven generally wanted to do, but the Weinsteins wouldn't let him. So, in your in your head, are you thinking this could be a nice way of fulfilling his original dream? Yeah. And remaining true to Craven. Especially if, in my mind, they're going to bookend the original characters at yeah. this point. I think this is a transition into a new era. Mm. And what better way to do that than to do what he originally wanted to do in the year 2000 with Scream 3? Because there was a long gap, a big gap between Scream 3 and 4. Oh, 11 years. Gap. Yeah. And when you think about it, as you say, Scream 3 is kind of the outlier in the series. Yeah. It's more of a comedy. Yeah. It's not, we're not, we, we don't, we're not in Woodsboro, uh, yeah. in the town, in that. There are bits I really like. I love the doppelganger thing. I love the meta-ness of they're there while someone's filming a film I based do. on their lives. I do. I love the Hollywood that connection. Is, a, a level of meta that the others kind of couldn't reach because they're yeah. just commenting on the film genre. This is they yeah. are commenting on their own film. Yeah, absolutely. And I really like that. Yeah. Uh, I like like Wes Craven being quite bold and slipping in a Weinstein dig at the same time with Weinstein the whole dig. plot team about yeah dirty producers. I think so. I think it, it could be a reference to Polanski as well from back in the day as yeah. well, considering one of the characters is the bad guy is called Roman <laughs> yeah. in, in the film as well. I think mean, he it's tried to do as much as he could while also being quite... I think there's got to be a reason he waited so long yeah. to do another Yeah, I, I agree. I th there's a lot of things to hate it's about not Scream 3. There's it's not an outwardly bad that... film. It's it's fun to watch still. I love it. It's just my issues are at the plot and I don't like it when you mess with the timeline of the and the motivations of the original. 
for, for them to sort of turn around and be like, oh no, Billy and Stu were, uh, they were just puppets. It's like, not that you're taking away from Yeah, but again, that. I think... You're giving them a motive that they were being told what to do. Talking about what we were saying before, it felt, the Scream series fell into a trap of it ultimately just kind of became parody in and of itself. Yeah. It's almost like they didn't quite know how they could better the first film. Yeah. And I will always defend Scream 4, moving on to... You do like Scream 4 a lot. I like Scream 4 more than Scream 3. Yeah, I think a lot of people do. But I, looking at where the new ones are going, and I'll get into it a bit in the TV series, Scream 4, flawed as it is, and it has that horrible late to, like mid to late 2000s grain over the top mm-hmm. of it, and it's all dark and it has to be grungy. I love the opening of the fresh up. There's been like eight stab films yeah like that's absolutely hilarious yeah but it was a bit ahead of its time with the tech side of it i think west Craven saw where it was going like, it's a bit ridiculous having a guy walk around with like a headset of a webcam on but having the killer communicate through phones and technology and cameras it's like you were just a bit too early with this I... considering we all live with a camera in our phone in, in our pockets now mm-hmm. look at the trailer for the new one just messing the oh what and like someone's ringing landlines you know kind of like Confused the why someone's ringing a, a landline, having your locks on your phone. That is what Scream 4 wanted to do, and the TV series did that better. The I, TV series took the core bones of 4 yeah. and did it with the tech that was there at the time. I also think, well, I mean, for me, the, the TV series created better characters than Scream 4 yeah. did. we got to spend a lot, although Hayden Panettiere... She, we don't know if she's dead. Everyone I want it to come back. Everyone loves Aiden Penetier in Scream 4. She's, she's, I actually, she's a fun character. I like the reveal of the killer as well. I like the family link. It's the, stronger motivations than free. That she just she wants fame. Yeah. She wants the notoriety. Could look at what kids are like today with TikTok and yeah everything. People do anything for fame. Would online people have killed for views and stuff like that? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think to, what that's Scream, another thing that kind of cements four as being ahead of its time well, Scream 4 also reintroduces the horror element that is lacking in Scream 3 yeah. I feel like Craven corrects his own mistake yeah it's also there. very bloody oh it is it is incredibly bloody mm. but I, I do absolutely agree that the TV series which was what MTV yeah MTV I think it was started in 2015 which I was a bit nervous about I was a bit dubious about it was a recommendation from you yeah I binged it because I thought it was absolutely brilliant people are put off by the new mask People were put off. But it's like, as much as this this mask here exists in our world, yeah. so it makes sense, in that universe, it's a post-operation surgical mask. And when you know the yeah. backstory of the killer, yeah, it makes perfect sense. And it, I, I honestly thought it looked a bit like a sex doll at first. But <laughs> Just I... that wide mouth. But it grew on me so much, and the characters grew on me. The t- when I saw all the tech side of yeah. it, it's like, this is what Scream 4 wanted to do. It was literally just a couple of years yeah. too soon. The TV series, for me, does so much better what the the gist of Scream 4 is. Yeah. And I think by being able to have, like, like 10 hours in yeah. a first season, the reveal of the killer is a lot more surprising and is yeah. the closest we get to a shock reveal from the first one. Just because they, they're taking advantage of the fact that they do have time to draw the story out and yeah. introduce more threads and then... Yeah. Even go, I really even going into the second series, expand on it even more. Like, I think one of the most scream things they did was when the season ended, season mm. two. You, you obviously, didn't watch it live. Like we were waiting weekly for it. We get the final episode, and then a notification came up saying final episode coming October mm. this year, which was two or three months away. Yeah, they made us wait for a season finale, which ended up being a separate story. So the cliffhanger from the penultimate episode we barely get any payoff for it's like you lord you've tricked us you've put, made us wait in excitement to tell us a different also really cool story set yeah. on the nile which is very i know what you did last summer yeah and i thought that was brilliant but then mtv yeah. is like no it's great they brought back the original yeah. scream for season three it's like scream in the hood yeah it's not very good well we have never had an answer to the questions from the end of scream season two yeah. and I think that's an absolute travesty. Season three does a lot wrong. You've not watched you, it. I don't. You can't quite forgive. I can't forgive it. They teased us with Candyman versus Ghostface. It's just really sad. And it's an off-screen fight. They ruined it. What? It's okay. 
No, it's not okay. <laughs> it's it's not absolutely okay. not okay. <laughs> they, the closest we came to recapturing the mystery and the intrigue of the first film, yeah. they abandoned because people didn't like how different the mask was. That's what it came down to. People couldn't accept the change of costume. People, when you dare to be different, sometimes it backfires in horror. Yeah. But then, you know, it might find, usually, like, nine times out of ten, it finds favour later on with a different audience. Yeah. But they've not even continued it in a comic or anything. Like that. We don't know where that story goes. It's but such a good cliffhanger. Speaking of I Know What You Did Last Summer, um, the film, the 97 film, comes out a year after Scream. By the same writer. It's written by Kevin Williams, Kevin Williamson, who is just phenomenal. I mean, yeah. the guy can write for teenagers. He really can. He also created Dawson's Creek. Yeah. which is just an iconic TV show, again, focused around teenagers. But we've also recently seen um, a new TV series about I Know What You Did Last yeah. Summer, I which is... At this point, as we're going, we're on, like, episode... I think we just yeah. finished episode five, which feels like it's trying to be the... Ironically, trying to be the Scream TV series. It it's bringing the is. tech side into it. It is trying it's to be the like TV series. It's kind of like a less interesting version of the Scream TV series. It makes a few mistakes for me that parallel Scream 4 in the sense that it feels like it's written by someone who is trying to be in tune with a different and younger generation. Yeah. And kind of missing the mark because he's a bit of overkill in some ways. Yeah. And the tech, in the personalities, in, in the narcissism. There's a lot of, of they're throwing a lot characters. of buzzwords out there and it's like... It's a bit too much. It's, there's enough going too, on to keep us intrigued. You can tone we it down a notch. Yeah. Not every teenager acts like a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Scream TV series did it better. Yeah, I agree with that. One thing I think Scary Movie Strangely did really well was combining the story of Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer. I never thought until rewatching it how well those two actually the blended two actually, together. Yeah, I mean, like, not that they're the same, but the two stories, you could actually inter like intertwine, wove, intertwine yeah. them. And that is actually a very coherent story. And it works. Scary Movie also, their reveal at the end, you can kind of see it coming. Oh, yeah. It's also... It's just as good it in is, a weird, yeah. in a bizarre it way. Is. It kind of works as like it's it kind of plays. Film. It kind of plays on a fan theory that Billy and Stu were gay. This is kind of like an ongoing conspiracy, or that, that at least um, me, Stu is is Stu is the scarier feelings. one because he's just kind of go along just because he wants to. Well, this is it. I mean, the, you know, the reveal of Scream. Billy, it turns out, he's sore and bitter because his mom left them. His mom left his dad because of Sydney. Because Mother. his dad was having an affair with Sydney's mum. Yeah. So he's got... He's, he's got actual motivations. about that. But Stu... Stu's just going along for the ride. He's just going along for the ride. And that arguably makes him Peer a scarier pressure. villain. And <laughs> the jokes of peer pressure. Oh, Matthew Lillard's performance is phenomenal. It was something and he was so, else. They were both so nice as well. They were fantastic. They were so good with the fans. And especially the little kids. I, I oh, love it. Oh, they were great. We had a lot of... Uh, people dressed up as like scooby-doo characters at this convention which was yeah which was just great but which the two of them were just wonderful yeah but I'm, I'm very excited to see what they're going to do going forward because it has been a while obviously 2011 was the last film i mean so literally like 10 well by the time this film comes out 11 years we've seen obviously i mean we've talked a lot about how scream has inspired horror and its legacy lives on will scream outright ever just be remade i don't think so really like the TV series, when they tried to be different with a different killer, different mask, different story, it didn't work and it inevitably went back to the original killer. Mm. Obviously, it's the same voice because the same guy's voice scream with yeah. that mask for all the way. It's a different guy for the seasons one and two because it's different. Yeah. He's yeah. back to the new one. I don't think they'd ever just outright remake it. Do you not think? I think they'll always just be a different killer using the costume. Yeah. And as I say, I genuinely think in this new one, I think we're going to see some legacy characters killed off. Yeah, I'll see. I mean, again, based on the trailer alone, Scream, I'm going to call it Scream 5, even though it is just called Scream. Yeah. It, again, it looks like it is just an outright horror movie. Yeah. There's, I can't see any comedy in this, unless they're just shielding it. Yeah. But it, for all intents and purposes, it looks like a straight yeah. up horror Do you think slasher. Potentially, could we see the end of Sydney? I know Wes Griffin always wanted it to be a survivor, mm. but I, I, I think this is the end of Sydney in these films. I think that's the only way they could get Neve Campbell to come back. I is, don't think the three of them will come back again. No. I, I think they, they want to use this to set up new stories yeah. with new characters. Yeah. That's why I genuinely think they'll, they'll want to honour a story that Wes Griffin wanted to tell in 2000. It will we'll come back in January and... Um, I'll, I was in the same costume, like, 
I told you. I absolutely <laughs> told you. But I mean, you know, but fans want this. If you look online, people want him to be the killer. They well, the always want him to be the killer. The reason that they um, went back on that storyline is because, unfortunately, when they were writing the script for Scream Three, it coincided with Columbine, the Columbine shootings in America. Yeah. And Craven and the producers thought that there just wouldn't be an appetite for a kind of teenage cult killing storyline yeah. because I guess the idea was Lillard was going to be alive. And he'd have this kind of cult following, and yeah. he'd be telling these kids. Kind of saw esque to... disciples. Yeah, disciples. Yeah, absolutely. So Craven just didn't think that t- time wise, it just didn't work out. Yeah. Which is probably, in hindsight, maybe a good decision to make. But yeah, when you think about what could have been. So yeah, the its legacy is strong. I mean, when you think about it, the, the original film screen, it doesn't do anything groundbreaking in terms of the plot. You know, teenagers no. being killed by a mass killer is something we've seen before. Yeah. We'll see again. It's part of the point of it. <laughs> it. Which is exactly the point of it, yeah. There's nothing original about the concept, but it's the way it's executed and it's the character's awareness of what they're going through that made it such a unique film. And that, I think, will be replicated time and time again. Yeah. And I hope it will be as well. And that's, like we said at the beginning... Horror wasn't the same after Scream. Can you make a horror today without being slightly self-aware? In some way, aware. It's, it has to actively yeah. try and not follow those rules that were in that film. Exactly. Or at least to have a horror film where characters in some way, you know, don't even reference a horror movie. It's, they're hard to find. Yeah. They're Usually, absolutely hard to find. These characters in modern day horror films are aware of the horror genre. It exists in the world of the film. Yeah. And that, I think... Is yeah, it's, it's always confusing that characters still make stupid decisions that characters make in horror films, even yeah. though they're actively aware exactly. of horror films. Exactly. But yeah, I think, yeah, its legacy is absolutely strong, and we'll see so many different inspirations from Scream. Yet to come. Yeah. Great horror film. It is a great, One absolutely fantastic horror film. It is. I, I rewatch it. I rewatch it constantly. Yeah. I think it's a fantastic movie. I know movie. it word for word. I've seen the making of it. I want to get the script to it one day. Yeah. And obviously, the reason why when we go to Full of a Horror, we don the costume. We don the costumes. Don the costumes. Yeah. And uh, we we actually like we want to pay. We want to meet the stars of this film. It's an important film to us. Yeah. And judging by the costumes we saw there, I saw a lot of screams. There was a couple of scenes. People still love this film, and People, that's why they're still making them. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was made in the '90s, which you know, by far now is you know quite. Not too far away, but it's, it's thirty it's years ago. Distant enough to feel different and to feel those differences. In some ways, Scream is kind of a dated movie. Mm-hmm. But the, oh my god, it's like the technology they use in it is dated. Yeah. But the story. The story itself. The story itself. Set a very big horror precedent. wouldn't be how it is without Scream. No, absolutely not. From this nineteen ninety. And arguably, I'd say film. we wouldn't have the new Scream coming out if it wasn't for 2018's Halloween. Maybe not. Because that definitely sparked a resurgence in revisiting old property games. So we yeah. had it in around 2007 to 2011 time, a couple of remakes yeah. happening that aren't bad films, no. but didn't do as well. Exactly. It seems like they finally worked out how to do it, and it's just do a sequel to the original. Yeah. yeah. Just go back to the original. Just That's how you do it. go back to the original. Sometimes it's the only way you can do it. Yeah. But yeah, scream. Love it. We love it. Always will. Interesting. Like, one final point that I had that we forgot about. Is it... Okay, another link to Scary Movie is that was the original name of the film. It was meant to just be called Scary Movie. It was Scary, called Scary Movie. Movie. Yeah. I don't actually know at what point it changed to Scream or whose suggestion that was. I either. think Scream just sounds better. Yeah. I think that Liv must have just... Yeah. I do, I do love that the Wayans went with the original name of it. I do, I do too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like film. it's kind of like Family Guy calling their Star Wars, for, like their Star Wars parodies, Blue Harvest, because that was the original name of yeah, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I like that. Yeah, absolutely. But, There's so many things to love. Yeah, about we will see franchise. you in Jan. Yeah, we'll we will see you in January. We'll be Hopefully, back with, with a, a scream update. with a scream review. See you I'll have right. I'll have be. Ext- I feel like I'm going to be extremely happy everywhere, but I'm either going to be extremely cocky. Or tail between your legs. Or tail between my legs. <laughs> or, God forbid, we both sit there thinking, God, that would have been much better if they just did that. 
Yeah. Oh, please don't screw up Scream 5. Because Neve Campbell said she wouldn't come back without Wes. Yes. The fact so, that they've managed to get her back makes this, me think this is going to be something special. This must have been a strong script. Yeah. And it also makes me suggest that there must be some kind of finality to, it. to this. Yeah. And it does also look, again, just judging by the trailer, there's a lot of links to the original film. Yeah. We see Stu's house. I think there's going to be a reason why we see Stu's house. Yeah. Whether it's for the reason you think or not, but yeah. So I think this film will give closure to the franchise in some way. Yeah. Definitely. But long live Scream. Long live Scream. So yeah, uh, as usual, thank you for watching. I don't know when this one's coming out. We have no I idea. Have no, in the grand scheme of things, I think by this point we have now recorded five episodes ahead. Yeah. It'll come out. De it'll definitely come out before Scream it will. comes out. It will. Yeah, this is just our little love, love letter to one Scream's of, one of legacy. Our one of our favourite films. Yeah, of all time. So yeah, thank you for listening for listening to us. If you want to see more Scream videos, we could go film by film. Yeah. Just let us know. We'd be happy to. Unlike Slumber Party Massacre 3, I will watch those. I will take that <laughs> request in and I will happily rewatch those. We pick those. and choose what we We pick we and choose, hey. It's our channel. We can watch what we want. Look at we pressured. <laughs> Why can we pressure by our this eight subscribers? This costume's gone to your head. Oh, it has. It has. <laughs> right. Goodbye.